Omakase. It's one of the hardest meals for a chef to prepare. It's a chef curated meal, but it's more than that. It's an experience. So what goes into making one of the most complicated meals on the planet? I met up with the head chef at Namo in Dallas to find out. My name is Kazuhito Mabuchi. All my friends and guests call me Kaz. I was born and raised in Japan, and I left Japan when I was 19, and I've been living in the States since. To me, omakase experience is a different. It's not just serving the food or drinks. It's more like an environment. I want guests to feel like comfortable sitting here, eating and drinking, talking to our staff or chef, hopefully learning from us, you know, about the fish or sushi or entire experience in the omakase night. Preparing for omakase and regular service is kind of tough, but luckily I have a good team. Everybody works so hard. Even though, especially on the Tuesday, I have a lot of stuff to prep, you know, for the omakase on Wednesday night. So I'm not really, you know, leading the line, um, serving during the regular service, but I trust my crew. So I can just focus on, you know, preparing the omakase menus. So Chef Kaz not only has a great team, but he can also control the quality of the fish better than almost any other restaurant in the country. That's because Namo has their own fish and wildlife license. So every single week, Kaz is able to work with a buyer in the Japanese fish market, and he can select each fish himself. And within 12 to 24 hours, that fresh fish is at the airport in Dallas, ready for pickup. Today we have some special fish as well. These two are uni box. So we got different type of uni. And this is a very special Murasaki uni. It's a purple sea urchin. This is one of the most high-end sea urchin in Japan. But this sea urchin eating the highest quality of kelp in Japan, in Hokkaido. And then that kelp, we used to give it to the emperor back in the old days. Yeah, that's really um, like expensive kelp. They are eating the better kelp than human. This is a kohada, it's a gizar sha. This is a katsu. One of our guests' favorite fish. It's a shirao, it's an ice fish. It's a, like a little clear fish. This is one of my favorite white fish. It's a nodoguro. Okay. And this is a really special fish. This is the Japanese king salmon. So I've been asking my buyer, you know, they find this one, you know, just let me know. But finally, I got it. In Japanese, we call the masunosuke. If this one gets bigger, we call the o masunosuke. O means like big or bigger. But this seven is pretty big, but it's not big enough to become o masunosuke. They say you cannot target this fish. You have to, um, you get it by accident. So that's why it makes it special. If I'm lucky, I can get it two or three times a year. Sometimes I cannot get it even like once for three years. So it's very rare. So if you have a chance to try masunosuke or osuke, you definitely should try it. As Chef Kaz kept prepping, he explained to me that fresh fish doesn't always mean straight to the plate. Kaz uses traditional techniques to bring out the best flavors of the fish. This week, I focus on Edomai style sushi. Edomai style sushi is the first style sushi study in Japan more than 200 years ago. Because uh, back in the old days, there was no fridge or refrigerator or freezer to keep the fish fresh. So they needed to work on the fish using salt or soy sauce or kelp to extend the life of the fish. Still, that's the best way to like, age the fish nowadays. And then most of the high-end sushi restaurants in Japan use these techniques. As Kaz continued prepping his fish, it got me thinking about how much hard work really goes into this. Every single piece of salt or kelp or even water is placed with intention and purpose. This isn't something that you can figure out overnight. So I asked him, what does it really take to get to the next level? Your skills and knowledge is not going like 
perfectly 90 degree, you know, with your time and effort, but it goes like slowly up and up. Then at some point, your skills and knowledge goes like shoot up. But uh, most people give up, you know, until you reach that point. You know, that's kind of sad things, but you need to be, you know, be patient. You know, until you reach that point, then you're going to enjoy, you know, what you're doing. So even though they had a lot to prepare, they still had to do a regular service. Luckily, Kaz can leave it to his team, so he can stay focused on the omakase. When the dinner service finally wrapped, Kaz just kept working through the night. with the salt water, I'm sorry. But yeah, I'm just gonna boil it and then break it down and then make the nigiri. It's a hairy curl from Hokkaido. Good size too. He got longer hair than I do, you know? It's a very basic fish for the Edomai style sushi. I prepped this one last weekend, uh, Sunday. So it's been marinated about five days now. I'm gonna put all the fish I prepped into the box. This is like a final step and kind of exciting step. I get so excited. So prepping part is hard, but after done prepping, I am just enjoy it. I just want to go over the menu a little bit. We have oyster for the first appetizer. I'm going to serve with a Stella Bay oyster with murasaki uni. That's a purple sea urchin. Uh, madako for the second. It's a Japanese octopus. I cook with uh, roasted green tea and serve with uh, yuzu kosho pepper on the side. And then booty, king yellow tail, uh, from Kyoto and uh, smoked sawara from Kyoto as well. Uh, wagyu tostada, and that's more like a Texas style, very rich, fatty uh, type of appetizer. And then ankimo, again, uh, it's very rich, different type of richness, but it's a monk fish river. With only one hour to go until the first service, the team made sure that every single detail of the night was perfect. The wine pairings, the whiskey pairings, even how the chopsticks are laid out for the guests are all done with purpose and meaning. Two full days of preparation and late nights, the omakase is about to begin. These are uh, fish I'm gonna make. The kimmedai, gold eye snapper and then uh, akami zuke. It's a uh, Japanese bluefin tuna, but lino part, and then also marinated uh, soy sauce, special soy sauce. And these are uh, gizar shad. It's a uh, kohada. And this is a uh, kawahagi, uh, fire fish. Dude, you're so not stressed out. No, no. I just control myself. That's a zen, you know?
As the last service started to wind down, I looked around and felt emotional. Kaz curated this dinner that truly came from his heart. Not to mention, Chef Kaz put in back-to-back 16-hour -back days, and he was full of life and energy throughout the entire dinner. You have to really love something to work this hard at it. After everyone left, I wanted to see how Chef Kaz was feeling. Alright, you did it. Well, we did it. Are you going to sleep tonight? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to sleep good and then take a rest and then walk again tomorrow.